Today, I would like to talk to you about maybe the most famous, let's say, energy storage device right now, which are lithium-ion batteries. And I would also like to tell you why I believe it's time to look beyond lithium-ion batteries. We're all pretty much familiar with the concept of how we generate electricity. Unfortunately, 67% of it still comes from fossil fuels, while renewable energy are less than 6%. The great advantage of electrical energy is that it's very versatile. In our household, we use it to light, it, light up our uh, houses, to warm it up during the winter, cool it down during the summer. can be easily converted into mechanical energy as well. And also, it can be very easily transported at long distances through what we know as the electrical grid, which is basically the interconnected network for delivering this electricity from the suppliers to the final consumers. So if for some reason we can use this energy right away, but we want to defer its user to a later stage, we need to store it somehow. Energy storage is very important for different reasons and applications. One of the most important ones in the next future is going to be the integration of renewable energy with electric grid. Renewable energy is very volatile. The sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow. So you need to accumulate this energy when you have a peak of power production and give it back to the system when it's required. On a more day-to-day operation and life, we use energy storage in our portable devices. We want to store that energy and use it along the whole day and charge it back at night. Same kind of deal with transportation. We charge it in our battery car, we want to have it uh, run for as long as we can and then uh, charge it again. One of the most efficient way of storing electrical energy is to electrochemical energy storage devices, batteries in particular. <coughs> In 1991, Sony commercialized the first lithium-ion battery that revolutionized the whole battery market. We're going to get a little scientific here. So a lithium-ion battery is made of three components, a positive electrode or cathode, a negative electrode or anode, and an electrolyte in between. So when you want energy out of your system, there's a flux of electrons flowing from your anode to your cathode, and this electron can do some work for you. You can think uh, about it as a river and you have a meal on your river, the river and the water flows and you can get some energy, some useful energy out of it. <coughs> the only difference with this analogy is that electrons are negatively charged. So at the same time, in order to maintain the charge balance, you need to have a positive charge flowing from your anode to your cathode material as well. This positive charge is a lithium ion. The role of cathode and anode material is store as many lithium ions as you can in the smallest volume possible, because the energy you can get out from your device depends on that. The more lithium ions you have, the more energy you can store. Lithium in particular um, have the advantage of being one of the smallest elements on the periodic table. So you can store a lot of energy in a very tiny space, which is exactly what we need for our portable applications, for both our phones and also to extend the range of our electric vehicles. If you look at the lithium ion battery market in the past 15 years, there has been an explosion and is expecting to grow even more in the next future. So a little breakdown, this green bar here is related to cell phones, and you can see it went up until 2008, 2009, and it's pretty much constant right now. The gray bar is related to portable PCs, which are basically laptop and uh, tablets. And it also went up around 2010, and then it's pretty much constant, it's actually kind of decreasing. The driving force of this expansion has been in this others bar. There's a lot of technologies behind this mm, others bar. Let's say one of the most important ones is going to be electric vehicles. This is a picture of a Tesla Model S car. In a Tesla, the battery pack is located at the bottom of the car here, for reasons related to center of gravity and also safety and space, actually. If you would have to open up one of these battery cars, it's made of about 7,000 tiny little batteries, each of which has the capacity of a lithium-ion battery. So 7,000. So for every car that you will sell in the future, it corresponds to about 7,000 portable devices. So you can imagine if uh, the penetration of electric vehicles will go up in the future, that's going to be massive. There's going to be a massive effect on lithium ions. About five years ago, people started asking the question, but if you want to power up this revolution, do we have enough lithium? So that's a kind of a tough question to answer, but let's try to break it down. Let's take as a model a Nissan Leaf which is an average size electric vehicle. In a Nissan Leaf, you have about 2.4 kilograms equivalent of lithium. The total reserves of lithium around the world are about 10 million tons, which is kind of hard to imagine. So if you convert it into Nissan Leafs, you have about 4.1 billion cars. That's a lot of lithium. Nowadays, we have about 1.2 billion cars all over the world. 
So without even considering uh, the possibility of recycling lithium in the next future, we have plenty of lithium in the foreseeable future. The problem is that the annual production is only of about 33,000 tons a year. That corresponds to about 10, a little over 10 million Nissan Leaf a year. Every year we sell about 80 to 90 million cars. So there is a problem of supply and demand, as you can imagine. So the way I look at lithium is a little different. Instead of the analogy with gold, I look at it as an analogy with oil. Like oil, lithium is located specifically in South America. 80% is in the triangle Bolivia, Chile, Argentina. So you can imagine if the demand will go up in the next future, there's going to be a problem of demand, right, and offer. And um, that could, you know, result in problems with price and maybe like uh, create problems in the whole evolution of electric vehicles from fossil fuels to electricity. So what I'm doing is try to look for alternatives to lithium ion. So we want something that can replace lithium, but will result in similar energy density, so similar energy per unit volume. And if you look in the map, you see the light blue area here. There's an element that is very similar to lithium and is uh, everywhere, very cheap, and it's sodium. Sodium is present as sodium chloride. There's about 35 grams of sodium chloride, chloride per liter, so there's plenty of lithium in the next future. So what I'm trying to develop are sodium ion batteries. The only problem compared to lithium is that sodium is bigger. So why is that a problem? Because all the materials we've been developing for the past 30 years for lithium ion batteries don't work with sodium. So that's exactly what my research group is working on. We are developing new materials specifically designed for sodium ion batteries. So in order to wrap him up and stay in the 10 minutes uh, times, um, lithium ion batteries are um, gonna be important and hopefully I show you that that's, that's gonna be even more important in the next future. I believe it's gonna be very important to um, develop an alternative technology to lithium ion. Sodium ion is a potential candidate in order to power up the electricity revolution. Thank you all for your attention.